Hi everyone, how are you all going? Hello, my name's Tiger Lily. If you haven't met me before, I'm a guide leader with Albany uh, Clover Guides. And I have my other leader who I work with. She's um, over this way or over that way. Um, this is Gecko and she's also going to help us do some things. Um, today we are going to talk about knots and knotting. The theme was let's get knotted. Um, now some of you are going to go, oh my god, not knots. But actually we're going to work backwards today. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm just checking on my other screen over here when I look this way is I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to start by showing you something showing you a video that I made for something that I don't think you would think of as knots. Um, how many of you know how to braid? Lots of you, do any of you know how to braid? What about plaiting? I guess if you know how to braid, you can plait. Okay, so we've got heaps and heaps. All right, so I made a video to show you how to plait and braid. Yes, and even if you have really short hair, that's actually something really, really important that you need to know, that if you have really short hair, you can still put a braid in your hair. I'm not kidding, you really can. And you can still um, put weave or a plait through your hair. Um, I've seen it on very, very short um, hair. So it can be done. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to run you, well, hmm, I'm just having a quick, quick look. Maybe I won't run you through plaiting and braiding, but what I did want to tell you about is that um, with plaiting and braiding, that is exactly the same as tying knots. And now you're all going to go, what? I don't understand how plaiting and braiding has anything to do with knots. Well, Plaiting and braiding is a type of weaving where when we plait and braid, we go under and over, under and over. And um, actually tying knots is also the same. Tying knots is weaving. It's going under and over and under and over and under and over. So if you guys have, um, if you guys have, a piece of string you can see does everyone have a piece of string you can see that you can weave and plait actually do you know what i'm going to show you the first part of my video because it's going to show you plaiting and you can just remind yourself like of the fact that plaiting is actually weaving so hang on and i will um, there it is. Okay, and we need to tell it to talk to you. Lily, how are you guys all going? I haven't seen a lot of you in ages. Just and what that has to do with knotting. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is learn how to do a basic plait. And I'm going to show you first with some wool. So I'm going to pin this here. This is on my couch, so it's pinned onto my couch. Right, now we're going to get, we have three pieces of wool, red. This is cream, I suppose, and white red white and blue so the red one on my right hand side I'm going to take into the middle and bring the white one over to the right hand side and then I'm going to take the left one and bring that into the middle the blue one and bring the red one over to the left hand side 
then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take the white one and put that one in the middle and bring the blue one over to the right hand side and then I'm going to take the red one and put that into the middle and bring the white one over to the left hand side. And I'm going to keep going all the way down and repeating those steps right in, left in, right in, left in until I have a plait or a braid. So this is the basic thing that you need for any sort of braiding that you do with your hair or anything else. And this is a form of weaving. Okay, so did you see how with the plaiting, um, it goes under and over? So with all knots, they go under and over and hopefully that's going to help you get your head around some of our basic knots. Um, by the end of sort of this age group, you should all know at least five different knots. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, those five different knots are really straightforward. I'm going to share again with you the five knots you should know. Mommy. So this, this is my favorite knot website of all the knots. It's called Animated Knots and it's the best website. It's got all the different knots on it. Um, and so the first one you should know is the overhand knot. Okay, so this knot, you probably don't even know what it's called. It's just with your piece of string, you put it through the loop and pull. And that's an overhand knot. And that knot, a lot of you probably don't even think it's a knot. Sorry, everybody. I've got my little boy who's also pestering me. My apologies. He's beautiful, but he's a bit lost at the moment. So you probably didn't even think that was a knot. It is. It's a knot that's used to stop the rope from slipping or moving in some way. Easy, right? That's pretty straightforward. So that's one knot. The next type of knot that you should know is a what the website is calling a square knot and which we know as a what type of knot is this? This one here. What do we call it? Just um, shout it out in the chat. Guys, yep, I can see you guys know it's a reef knot. Here they're calling it a square knot because you can see that it is a square and it's your left over right and twist and then right over left and twist and you get the reef knot, the square knot. Okay. And that one, they're tying it quite strangely, but that's you can always do that with your reef knot. All right, the next knot. Hi, Lily. Sorry to interrupt, yes. but can we redo the first knot, please? You got a few girls asking. Oh, okay. The overhand, overhand knot. Yes. And it's just. And, and do you want them to copy you? No, they don't have to copy me. They can sit there and watch, or they can copy if they're not sure. An overhand knot goes over and pulls and it's just that. It's that first little knot, okay? All right, so then the next knot, the next knots of the basic knots is the, um, actually I can't, let me just go back so that I can see. So the, that's the overhand, the square knot. The next one is the hitch. So this is where you need your broom. Has everyone got a broom? <laughs> it's 
So with your broom, you wrap that around and then you get the rope and go through. So you literally just tie it on to the broom. It's really straightforward. And that knot doesn't hold anything. That knot has to be secured with more things and it doesn't hold anything. It's not a very useful knot in itself, but put together with another half hitch, it becomes a little more useful and it holds a bit better. All right, so enough about that for now. There's other things you can do with knotting. Gecko has, has something that you can do with knotting that I think you'll find very interesting. And another thing that you probably haven't even thought of that is a type of knotting. So Gecko, do you want to show us? Sure, okay. So we do try and make, we do learn lots of knots in our unit, but we do try to make it fun. Because like Ty Lily said, as soon as we say knots, everyone goes, ah, even me. Let's be honest, even I do it. So I've, there is lots of different ways you can do knots. And one of them is finger knitting. So this is some finger knitting some girls did in our unit about two or three years ago. They made poppies for Anzac Day. And these are all finger knitted. And then some of them have been sewn together so they look like poppies. So I've got a PowerPoint here which if Tiger Lily unshares her screen, I can share my screen with you and I can show you how to finger knit using your hands. I know you weren't asked to bring wool and things today, so I'll just show you how, how these flowers were made and then when you've got time, you can do that at home. So, let's have a look here. Can you hopefully, hang on. Let's try this. Can you see that girls? Has that come up? Oops. Yep. Okay. All right, here we go, that's better. Okay, so this is finger knitting using your hands. So obviously you can see it's a lot easier for me to show you in pictures than it is for me to show you here with my hand. So obviously you start with your hand and you can see, whoops, I'm trying to find my camera, the way it's around. So you get the piece of wool and wrap it. I've got to do, I've got to do this backwards so that you can see <laughs> across your hand so that you hold it. And as you see, you loop the wool around every second finger and then you come back and you do the opposite away around. Can you see that? It's a little bit tricky, I know, but it should look like the photo, it should look like the picture. And then you grab the bottom loop once you've got a couple of rows. You grab the bottom loop and put it over the top and then pull tight. It's a bit tricky to see on the camera. But you should end up with something like that. And you continue on, and I'll show you the next slide. So that's what it should look like. That's what your first couple of rows should look like. And then you can see there they've started to loop around around the um, from the top. And then the next slide shows us how your finger knitting looks like after a while. You can see there the wool they've used in the picture is a little bit thicker than the wool I have here. I just use what I had available to me. And you can see Tiger Lily's busy there. Do you want to show us your hand, Tiger Lily? Yep, so that's what it should look like. Now, this picture here, you can see they've actually made, they've kept going, and they've actually made, whoops, and that's another way. So that's another way with a fork. 
So I know some girls, I just wanted to show you this way quickly as well. I know some girls really struggle with finger knitting. And there's another way you can do it with a fork. So you can see here from the pictures, you don't need the pipe cleaner. You can just have wool. And what you can do here is just wrap the wool around and around and around the fork. This isn't really knots, but it's another way to finger knit. And you end up at the end with a flower and you cut through the ends. So if you're struggling with finger knitting, that is another way you can make a flower. And that's something else you can do with knots. So you can see tiger lily there. I just want to show you one more slide, if I can bring it up. And these are all the different things you can make all the different ideas you can make with finger knitting. So this one here is fingerless gloves. This here is rainbows and flowers and snakes. There's different types of flowers. And a knot. And so last week I challenged you girls to, to, to make butterflies. This week, <laughs> my challenge is to make a, to do some finger knitting and make, can you see the pretzel? But I, I, I'd love to see a reef knot or something and you can actually tie a reef knot and make a necklace. Or over here, you could just make the um, normal finger knitting and turn it into a bookmark. So that would be absolutely amazing to see what you guys come up with next week. And that's it from me, Tiger Lily. Thank you so much, Gecko. Um, yes, there, I see there's some questions. Uh, okay, so finger knitting, it is complicated, but what finger knitting actually is, and you might be surprised to learn, it's actually snake lashing. So it's actually a type of lashing that we use when um, the most common way that my unit uses snake lashing is to make um, pioneering gadgets for like wash stands, like a tripod, um, where you wrap the rope, around three sticks usually, usually three sticks, not, um, I'm looking longingly over there because I have three sticks over there, but they're too far to go now and I'm lazy. So three sticks around your fingers and that's snake lashing. And if you, yes, and even if you're left-handed, if you're right-handed, if you've got sausage fingers, you can wrap string around your fingers. You definitely can. There's no, nothing, and if you just keep wrapping, like weaving again, this is weaving. This time we're going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, or out and in. I don't know, you tell me what you see. But either way, that finger knitting is actually what we would also call snake lashing. Now, this is actually what you do with knitting needles as well. And it's, um, and then crochet uses a slip knot, which is basic, a basic slip knot is you have the string at the back, this at the front, and you reach through your hole and you pull the rope through. It looks magical, it's not really. Hey, oh, some of you crochet. Okay, so, when you make a string, a crochet string, which is pretty much like this, where you just keep pulling the slip knot through, but you obviously don't pull it the whole way. If you keep pulling it through, you get what you call a chain, right? For crochet, a crochet chain. And I could, if I had the right size needle, I'm sure I could crochet you something amazing with this piece of rope but I choose not to. All right, so there it is. And what we do is we can undo it by just, someone said it's the magic trick where you just pull it, pull it and it just comes undone all the way to the end like that. 
and then I've got a piece of rope again. So that's um, crocheting and slip knot. So what have we talked about so far? I've been super sneaky and I bet you can't even guess. We've done an overhand knot, which is just this knot where you tie a knot, just, you just tie a knot in the end. We've talked about a lashing, which is going under and around and around and around and around and around and around and around. Now, when you get to the end, you do need to secure lashings, but if you've got the basics of a lashing, then it doesn't matter. And the other way you do lashings is you go round and around and around this way. Or actually, that's whipping, that's not lashing. So we've talked about braiding and plaiting and why that's a weave. Well, braiding and plaiting you can also use as um, in your hair, but you can also use it to make a rope stronger. If you plait a rope, it will be stronger, it will have more tension in it. We've also talked about the square knot, the reef knot. If you have your reef knot left over right, right over left, you make your square knot. If you're clever, you can do a heap of those. You just keep making square knots and eventually you end up with a beautiful macrame thing. So knots aren't always what you think they are. Even though we're teaching them to you, sometimes you think, why? What am I ever going to use this for? And this is why. All right. So let's go back to our broom handle. If you've got a broom, here's my broom. It's a lovely oats white broom. Okay, so let's talk about hitching, hitches. Who's got a pony or a horse? I bet some of you do. I'm certain some of you do. And so hitching is a word that we talk about for um, tying up horses. Sometimes we hitch the horse to the rail. Is, um, but why? Why do we say that? It's because we use a hitch to hitch the horse to the rail. So we have the rope that comes around and then the one that's the pony club knot, whoops, I slipped, sorry everybody. The one that's, that I learnt is the pony club knot is basically you pull the the string through like that and then it's a quick release knot so it comes undone real quick so the horse can escape if you need to. So that's a type of hitch. The reason it's a type of hitch is because this piece of string goes over the top of that piece of string and then it comes back through and that makes the hitch which is C I don't know if you can see. See that round thing? See how it's round around the rope? That's the hitch. That's what we call a hitch. So if it does that, it's a hitch. And if we keep going, we put it, we keep weaving. So we've gone, try to make it bigger. So we've gone here, we've gone under this rope, we've gone over this rope and then if we go under this rope and back through then we have a double hitch it's not a clove hitch it's a double hitch if we go the other way and we keep going over the rope and come back under you have the clove hitch Right, let me show you on the computer what a clove hitch looks like because that's going to be easier. It's much nicer than me doing it. Hey, can anyone tie a clove hitch? I'm wondering. Anyway, let's have a look. Back here to this one. So this is called Animated Knots. This is an awesome, awesome website. And it does actually have in this corner over here, scouting. So um, I realize we are girl guides. However, they have the knots that we need as well. 
So some of these are pretty fancy. There's an adjustable grip hitch, an alpine butterfly. An alpine blood butterfly is used to pick things up um, or to secure things. It's actually used for climbing, for um, different types of climbing as well. Um, the bowline. Bowlines are super, super cool. Um, the reason that bowlines are important is because they're not a slip knot. They don't slip. Um, cleat hitch. Who's ever done a flag raising ceremony? Let's have a little quick look at a cleat hitch. I bet some of you go, I didn't even know this was a knot. There you go, it goes around the cleat, up and into a figure of eight, and you circle it back and you pull. Done. Cleat hitch. So some of the things I think that you guys probably do every single day are things that I reckon probably you don't even realize are knots. And knots are really handy. All right, let's talk about the clove hitch and then I will answer questions. All right, so I'm going to run this one through. So you have the piece of rope goes around the pole, over the rope, around the pole and under the rope like that. And you have two pieces going each way like that. And that is your clove hitch. So it's, um, we actually sing hot cross buns to do a clove hitch. And we often find that people have forgotten a clove hitch before they've remembered it. So I will, un actually I'll run this through again. All right, so it goes, I like to use my arm. So it goes around, sorry, around and over. So that's your first cross in your hot cross buns. And then it goes around and back under. Hang on, I'll reach this way. Hot cross buns. One a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. So there's your cross for your clove hitch. The clove hitch has always got a cross in it. All right. So that is your clove hitch. Why do we use a clove hitch? Well, we use it for a number of different reasons and it's just totally handy. And one of the things is it's really awesome and important to be able to tie these knots. I found as I got older, I knew more knots than I thought I did. And um, sometimes I would have boyfriends or I would have friends who thought they knew what they were doing. And then I'd come along and check the knot and it came undone in my hands and I retied it. And they'd be like, where did you learn to do that? And I'd be like, well, I was a girl guide. I am a girl guide. I just know. It's just one of the things. So a lot of these knots, especially round turn and um, two half hitches and half hitches, that kind of stuff, are super important for camping. How many of you, actually, how many of you have been camping, like with girl guides? Oh, I saw someone's been 10,000 times. Whoa, that's huge. That's amazing. Okay, so for those of you that have not been camping, the reason we talk about knots is because we have lots of different types of tents throughout WA, and it's really important to know your knots so that you can put your tent up, basically. Um, <laughs> Nari, I can't even read that number, Nari Holland. My goodness. <laughs> okay. So, um, radio. I think, 
I think there's some um, there's some questions. Is that right, Gecko? Is there any not related questions? I'm reading myself, sorry. Um, there's, I did ask the girls to put in Q&A. There isn't any there at the moment. Oh, there is okay. one now. Hang on, no, that's it. that one's not quite relevant. Um, and I don't think we have, oh, we have five hands up. So girls with your hands up, if you have a, if you have a question for Tiger Lily, leave your hand up. If not, take it down for me. I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds. All right, so we have Abby. I think Abby's got a question. So Hi, Abby. Abby. I'm going to unmute you. Oh, sorry. Yep. You can ask. Hi. Hi. Hi, Abby. What's your question? Oh. All right, Abby's gone. Okay. Hang on. Let's try. No, Abby should be there. Hang on. Hi, Abby. Let's try, try talking. Right. Here we go. Try this way. No, Hi, just... Abby. Try that. No. 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 I'm unable to unmute Abby. Sorry, Abby. Let's try Amy. Hi, Amy. What's your question? Can you please do the slip knot again? I sure can. All right. It's, it's actually like a magic trick. It's like being a magician. Piece of rope. Coil it around. So what I have is I've got the loose bit underneath and all the rest of the rope on top. So the loose bit is underneath in my coil. And I'm gonna put my hand through the loop I've made and grab the rope on the other side. And I'm gonna pull it out like that. And then you should have one side that moves like that, and one side that doesn't, like that. Do you need me to do it again? I think I got it. Okay, good work. I'm proud of you. Thank you. All right, All right. try Abby again. Okay. No, sorry, Abby, for some reason I can't unmute you, but we do have Annabelle. Hi Annabelle, what's your question? Um, do you, re um, do you re um, <laughs> recommend any good websites for knots? The one that I've showed you, um, I'll put the link up into the chat, oh, is probably... Um, yeah. no. We found Abby. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one that I showed you is probably the one that I recommend. The, my favorite app is 3D Knots, but 3D Knots costs $7 to download. So for me, it's appropriate to have that. Um, you guys might not necessarily need an app that um, costs $7 to download to teach you to tie knots. There's some really good free ones um, and I can certainly put links to the free ones that I also occasionally use. But look, I knew. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Knots 3D Girls is free on the Google, on the Play Store and that's a really good app I've got, similar to Animated Knots and that one is free. free. Yep. So Abby has, um, we've worked out how to unmute Abby. So Abby, would you like to ask Tiger Lily your question? I don't have any questions. Okay, no Thanks, worries. Thanks, Abby. <laughs> um, and we have, we have four more Tiger Lily. Do we have time for them? Uh, yes, we do. All right, so these are the last four girls with their hands up. You're the last four. Sorry, um, Taja, but you have just missed out. Um, so, uh... Is it Alariah? Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. It's okay, it's Alaria. But um oh, Alaria. Do you guys have any like websites for finger knitting? That, like, I can I, yes, I do. So the PowerPoint that I showed you, there is a whole heap of um 
that we will upload. There is a whole heap of websites linked in that PowerPoint. So we'll be able to share them with you. Thank you. All right, so Zivana. Sorry, is that right, Zivana? I'm sorry about these names, girls. Who are we talking to? Right. Sivana, are you there? Did you have a question for Tiger Lily? Zivana R. No, right. oh, she's still okay. there. You go. She's unmuted right. now. What? Hello. Do you have a question? Oh, oh, oh! I think I accidentally pressed um. Um, hand up or something, sorry. Surprise! <laughs> no, All right, no did it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and the last one is Amy. Hi, Amy, what's your question? What knots do you use for the flag? Ah, well, there's a couple. There's actually quite a few. The first one um, that you use, are we talking the entire flag pole? Just when you're like putting it up, when you start guides. Okay, so when you, um, if you don't have a carabiner on your um, flagpole, you thread this through and you do a slip knot like that. Okay. Um, so the slip knot is your first, is that right? No, that's for a carabiner. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, you slip it through. And you just attach the flag with your overhand, well, with a half hitch, a double hitch, or a clove hitch. I'd attach the flag with a double hitch or a clove hitch. One of those, one of these ones like this. Um, on both ends. And then when you hoist it and you have the cleat, you do the figure of eight knot around the cleat, which is a circle around and then the figure of eight. And then you catch the loop at the end and you pull, sorry, catch the loop at the end and you pull it down tight onto the cleat. Does that, there's, I mean, there's a couple of ways that you could do it. You could also use a bowline but we didn't cover a bowline tonight, um, but that is the other way that you could do it. The bowline is the one where we talk about, you go round the tree and back through the, the rabbit comes out of the hole, round the tree and back through the hole, which um, I've actually made a slip knot. I haven't even tied a bowline. <laughs> so you have the hole, the rabbit goes through the hole, up and around and back through the hole and that's your bowline. Your bowline doesn't move, it just holds and that's also another way that you could do it. Um, I've done that really quickly, guys don't, don't freak out about that. I've done it really quickly um, and I will slow down. I'm planning on expanding the video that I made to teach how to braid and plait and I'll slow down on my video later in the week. Any more questions? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any more, Gecko? Um, I've just lost everybody. Hang on. Okay. Everyone's disappeared on my screen. Oh no. I oh, love that. Here we go. Here we go. So in the link, girls, a few of you were asking about, in the questions, you were asking about the free app that I was talking about. I've just put the link in the chat section and that for um, that was for the Google store, but obviously it looks exactly the same in the Apple store as well. So, and it's called Knots 3D. There is nobody else, Tiger Lily. There is a whole heap of people with their hands up, but I don't think we'll have enough time to get through them all. We did say five and there is, yes, and Amy, as asked, can we have the finger knitting link? I will get the PowerPoint uploaded to somewhere on Girl Guides WA. We will, um, we will put it somewhere for you. So we'll make sure you have the finger knitting link. You have links to knot tying apps 
in my unit, we actually do use the apps. We bring them along normally to any knot tying thing. Um, I expect you to know the knots by heart when you're in your mid twenties. I don't expect you to know them by heart when you're like in your 10 to 13 year age group. Um, oh, and the other thing that um, I will put up is the plaiting and braiding video for those of you that don't know. Um, so that you can have a look at that. All right, I think that's pretty much everything for now. Um, thanks, guys, for coming along. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed chatting with, with each other and I hope you're making new friends across the board. Um, what song do you guys want to finish with? Oh, I caught a bumblebee. Yeah. Is it bumblebee today? All right. Okay. Sleeves up, everybody. Right. You got your bee ready? I'm taking home a baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm taking home a baby bumblebee. Ouch, it stung me. I'm squishing up my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm squishing up the baby bumblebee. Oh, what a mess. I'm licking off my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm licking off my baby bumblebee. Oh, I feel sick. I'm throwing up my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm throwing up my baby bumblebee. What a mess! I'm sweeping up my baby bumblebee. Wait, my mommy be so proud of me. I'm sweeping up my baby bumblebee. They're all clean. Bzzz. Got it. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I know we love that one. Okay. So let's finish with taps and link. So um, we'll start with taps. Remember, we do jazz hands in our unit. Day is done, gone the sun, from the seas, from the hills, from the sky. All is well, safely rest, God is nigh. And do a little link with yourself. On the strength of each link in the cable depends on the link of the... Sorry. On the strength of each link in the cable depends on the might of the chain. Who knows when you'll be tested, so live that you bear the strain. Unit dismissed. And we'll see you next week, guys. Stay well and healthy. Bye. Bye.